Hi, my name's Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to talk about selections and how to modify them. If you want to do anything in Photoshop, you need to make a selection. That's because it's not as simple as saying, choose the window, or select everything that's red. Your computer doesn't understand your voice recognition, nor can it read your mind. So you have to use the different selection tools to actually make an accurate selection. Knowing how to actually refine that selection will get you better results. So here's a few ways that I employ to get great selections. Now, with most tools, you can make a basic selection. So for example, if you click and drag with a selection tool, you have lots of options. If you want to add to that selection, hold down the Shift key and drag, and it will combine to form a new, bigger selection. If you want to subtract, hold down the Option or Alt key and drag, and it subtracts from the selection. Notice that that actually made the change here. Shift is adding. Option subtracts. You can also choose to get the intersection. So we could drag like this, and only where the two selections intersect will we get a new selection. So those are some fairly straightforward ways to make a basic selection by adding or subtracting. But there's a lot more to it. Let's use a tool like the Quick Selection tool here and click on the sky and start to drag. Now that does a pretty nice job and it picks up. But if it didn't quite get what we wanted, we could choose Select Similar. And it will grab the additional blue in the scene because we made an initial selection based on blue. You'll also notice though that it's selected a few pixels within the image here as those indicated reflected in the window or down here. This is just fine. We can grab the marquee tool, hold down the option key to select around those stray pixels, and they are subtracted from the selection. So there you see two commands being used together to get a more accurate selection. Besides that though, there's more. You could choose Select, Modify, and then contract a selection to tighten it, or expand a selection to have it get bigger. If you'd like a gentler edge to your selection, you can actually choose Feather. And that will put a softer edge that's great for making an extraction. Let's double click so this is a layer, and we'll choose Select Inverse. Currently, we have the sky and cloud selected. Let's go ahead and actually finish that selection by grabbing the rest of these clouds here. There we go. And what I want to do is change this. Instead of having the clouds and sky selected, I want the building selected. So for that, we could choose Select Inverse. And the selection is reversed. We generally call that moving dashed line dancing pixels or marching ants. And this makes it easier to see your actual selection border. Now that we've got the building selected, we can go ahead and discard everything else non-destructively. To do that, make sure this is a layer by double clicking. If it's got lock and a background there, it's not a layer. You could then click the button right here to add a layer mask, and you see that things are hidden. Now we have a small line here, and that was actually caused by not getting a perfect selection, but no big deal. Click on the layer mask, load up black and white, and just paint with black, and it will hide that. Now, we'll explore layer masks in much greater depth coming up. You're going to want to know how to actually do these. Making a great selection is essential. There's one more thing, though, I'd like you to see with those selections. Let's go ahead and toss this away. I'll hit Delete. And what I want to do now is just select a window. We'll grab the polygonal lasso and click around one of these windows here. There we go. Notice the marching ants indicating an actual selection. If you want to scale that selection, it's pretty easy. Just choose Select Transform Selection. You can now grab and pull 
and actually make a scale. If you need to, right click and choose Distort and you could move those points around freely as you see fit. And notice we can reshape the selection border to match our needs. There we go. Press return and we have a new selection. If I needed to tweak that upper corner, just choose Select, Transform Selection, right click for Distort, and you can nudge that around as needed. Return will apply it. And that could be combined with something like an exposure preset here, and we can actually darken that window down a bit. So, Transforming your selections, modifying your selections, all very important. We're going to explore specific, much more advanced selection techniques as we go forward in our upcoming lessons. Be sure to join us next week when we talk about how to use Quick Mask, which allows you to combine brush strokes to make extremely accurate selections. It works great for things like hair or soft feathered edges. My name's Rich Harrington. I'd like you to stop by our blog at rastervector.com We've got some great things running there. You can download some new free actions, as well as check out our free resources area, and of course, all the back episodes of our podcast. Thanks again.